The history of Catalonia is a constant struggle against an oppressing Spanish political and judiciary system. Headed by tyrannical monarchies, fascist dictators, corrupted politicians and bankrupted governments. For centuries, the people of Catalonia have attempted to recover the rights and freedoms they lost under Spanish domination to continue developing a democratic and prosperous society open to the world. Catalonia's privileged location alongside the Mediterranean coast gave birth to a cultural community with an economy mostly based on agriculture, production and trading with other nations. No wonder that Catalonia developed and published the first international maritime law book which regulated sea trade for more than 700 years, becoming the basis of today's international mercantile law. The birth of Catalonia as a cultural and political nation started more than a thousand years ago. The Catalan flag, first parliament and Catalan constitution are some of the oldest in Europe today. In contrast, Spain's current national flag and first ever attempt of a Spanish constitution are just over 150 years old. Actually, the first time Spain began to take political shape was in the 15th century with the creation of the Hispanic monarchy. Born from the marital alliance between the two most powerful Catholic monarchies in the Iberian Peninsula, Queen Isabella of Castile, a crown of absolutist tradition with its capital in Toledo and the King Fernando of Aragon. A crown of parliamentarian tradition formed by a federation of kingdoms and the Principality of Catalonia which its capital city, Barcelona, was also the crown's capital. Despite becoming a part of the Hispanic monarchy, the Principality of Catalonia continued enjoying its own independent parliament, laws and currency for another 250 years. Such was its political independence that Spanish monarchs were obliged to swear obedience to the Catalan constitutions and laws, something completely unusual in medieval Europe. Another example of Catalonia's uniqueness within the Hispanic monarchy was the revolt of the Catalan peasants in the 15th century. It meant the end of many nobility abuses such as the right of the Lord to be the first one to have sex with a peasant's bride on her wedding night. According to UNESCO, the Catalan peasants made the first modern social revolution in human history. In contrast, in the Crown of Castile, nobility abuses and privileges continued for another 400 years. In 1641, after decades of bad governing by abusive, corrupted and bankrupted Hispanic governments, the people of Catalonia rise arms against Hispanic authorities and in an attempt to recover Catalonia's independence, proclaimed the Catalan Republic. It was a new peasants' revolution that became known as the Reapers' War. In 1705, the conflict would explode again in what would be known as the War of the Spanish Succession. It was an international war between two opposing social, political and economic models. One bloc was led by the crowns of Castile and France. They represented imperialism and absolutism, with a powerful noble class mostly enriched through colonial plundering and tax collection. The second bloc was led by the crowns of England, Austria, Holland and Aragon, with Catalonia as the crown's leading player. This second bloc was characterised by a rather federalist and parliamentarian tradition, with an economy strongly based on production and international trade. The people of Catalonia fought till the last moment to defend their social, political and economic model, but on the September 11, 1714, after a one and a half year siege, the capital city of Barcelona was occupied by the Castilian and French troops. By the right of conquest, all Catalan institutions, rights and freedoms were abolished. And the Castilian language, authoritarian laws and a list of abusive taxes and restrictions were imposed on Catalan people. It was from that day onwards, Spain's centralization of power in Madrid was consolidated the way we know it today. It was this imperialistic history of devastation and imposition by a Castilian oligarchy that had grown rich, abusing, plundering and heavily taxing the land and the people they had conquered. Which is why in the 17th century, the Netherlands and Portugal were the first to fight for independence from the Hispanic monarchy. Many others followed, all the way to the end of the 19th century with the independence of Cuba and the Philippines. 
No wonder that many independence movements, such as those of Argentina, Uruguay, Mexico and Colombia, among others, were often led by leaders of Catalan descent. By the beginnings of the 20th century, Catalonia had already experienced three industrial revolutions, while Castile had never experienced one. For Castile's oligarchy, the easiest way to get rich had always been conquering or getting close to the ruling power of the time. For instance, in the 19th century, to increase trade and prosperity, private Catalan citizens risked their own capital to finance the construction of a railroad network to connect the industry with the harbours. In the meantime, the Spanish government in Madrid would go bankrupt constructing a railroad network to connect all its royal palaces, just for the Queen and oligarchy's entertainment. In 1931, after years of bankrupted central governments and Spanish dictators, the people of Catalonia, tired of seeing any aspirations for Catalan self-governing systematically crushed, went to the ballots and massively voted for a pro-independence political party. Once again, the Catalan Republic was proclaimed. Only Spanish fascism, with the help of Hitler and Mussolini, would stop democracy and the national development of Catalonia. Anyone defending Catalan culture, rights and freedoms would be persecuted, as had already happened to so many other Catalans in the past. The president of football club Barcelona was arrested and shot dead by Spanish fascists for no reason. Architect Antoni Gaudí, at 72 years of age, was beaten and jailed for speaking in Catalan to a Spanish policeman. Or the president of Catalonia, who became the only ever democratically elected president in Europe, sentenced to death. After 40 years of General Franco's dictatorship and 40 more of a prearranged democracy by the dictator, history is stubborn and repeats itself. Today's Spanish government and institutions are ruled by the Partido Popular, a political party founded by former members of Franco's fascist regime. Spain leads Europe in political corruption, debt, unemployment, school failure and breaches to European legislation. The Spanish government and judiciary system continues its tax plundering on the Catalan economy on oppressing Catalan culture and persecuting its elected politicians. For almost two decades now, the Catalan community has been asking the Spanish government to invest in connecting our industry and harbours to Europe by train. Instead, the Spanish government has built the world's second largest high-speed passenger network after China a train system that will never be profitable and has so far only increased Spain's national debt. So the clash between these two cultural, political and opposing economic models continues unsolved. Today, over 80% of Catalonia's citizens agree that the best way to decide on the future relationship between Catalonia and Spain is through political negotiation followed by a referendum like the one the UK and Scotland agreed on. Unfortunately, due to its history, Spain has never developed a true democratic political culture. For Spain's ruling power, negotiating has always been seen as a weakness. A conqueror has no need to negotiate with his adversary. A conqueror attacks his adversary till this fully surrenders. That's why for the last decade, Spain's only response to all proposals from the Catalan Parliament to negotiate a democratic solution have been no. Worse still, lately the Spanish state has begun to persecute and jail elected members of Parliament and civil leaders. It has even ordered violence by police forces to stop peaceful citizens from voting. What has the European Union done to protect its Catalan citizens against Spain's attacks on democracy and freedom of expression? By supporting a democratic solution to this conflict, you are defending basic international human rights. 
you are helping to build a better Europe and world for all.